important. And that is the model that some of this um, green economy that we're maybe envying today, like uh, uh, India, did. They really put their eyes on education and skills. And today, arguably, India is a net supplier of skill in whatever discipline you can mention across the world. That, that is the way to go. That, that's what I was about to ask, because uh, China did it. Uh, yeah. China was able to close its borders and um, make sure that there was an inclusive participation in just about every sector in China. And 40 years later, China is the better for it. What would you say the government should do, hitting the ground to run this time around? Should the new administration do with regards to ensuring that uh, all components, all sectors, be it in infrastructure, be it in health, education, you just name it, we have a sense of working together with a, with a policy, with, with a blueprint that will give us that end result at the end of the day. One is that, thank God that this time we are not seeing a government that is new. This is a government that has been there for four years. So the uncertainty of who is taking over, what are they coming in, is, is out, of, out of the way. That's one gain we've made, building on what they've done before. We've seen ease of doing business improving from 170 in 2015 to 146 in, uh, in 2018, 19. Build on that and make sure that we move from those soft ease of doing business issues to hard ease of doing business. Registering business, fine, we've got it right. Uh, uh, um, uh, and some of that may be uh, selling trade, trade disputes. Businesses want to be able to move their goods from Kano to Lagos, from Lagos to Calabar easily. We want to see more roads constructed, more roads built, more railway, more rail tracks uh, constructed and, 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 is, and uh, they are active. We want to see electricity 24 hours. These are hard aspects of this ease of doing business that everybody wants to see. And once that is done, of course, private capital are very free and they will look for where they will make pro uh, profit. The Nigerian economy remains very attractive because of our demand structure and size. But some of these issues need to be put in place so that you don't only attract domestic private capital, but also pr foreign private capital. Our uh, FDI, about two point, uh, in 2018, $2.1 uh, $2 billion. That is almost an all-time low. And what is the reason? Uh, investors from outside the country are seeing things that they shouldn't see. And that is why some of our neighbors, including Ghana, uh, increasingly benefit from this flu. You, you have some indices on the business environment scorecards you know, of, of this government within uh, the past um, few you know, you, you know, it was just between June of 2015 and uh, May of 2016, and uh, I see that uh, that's where you have the ease of doing business, you know, going up and competitive ranking going up. But um, other things, um, I see red pointing down, <laughs> and it's <laughs> definitely not um, very, very encouraging. They, for, for instance, the trans transparency, transparency initiative. Um, um, corruption ranking is, is a little troubling, despite everything government is doing. And that is very worrisome when I saw it as well. It's not our data, it's not Nigerian data, and everybody can see that. When this government came, in, it came into force, uh, we're about 136, now about 148. So we've lost about 12 uh, points uh, uh, backward. That is worrisome. So it's big, uh, how, how reliable are some of these data that we get, in your opinion? Because well, uh, it's just as you said, just as you say, it's not, uh, it's not our own data. Yeah. Consequently, that means there is a deficiency in us even producing our own data sometimes. Just like the last uh, uh, in interviewer mentioned, um, the head of government might be seen as uh, great, you know, unimpeachable in different aspects. But what happened at the lower level, at the middle level? You know, we've seen situations where at the level of Abuja, instructions are given, policies are handed out, but MDAs and the middle level uh, management refuse to carry that, carry that out. These are issues. So a lot of corruption is still going on at the middle, mi middle level and very low level, and these are issues that need to be, to be dealt with. You are talking about what we need to do to open up the economy. There are not so many things, and some of them you don't even need to make any law. You know, it's just for the government to do what they need to do and be consistent in doing that. They, we need to open up our port, and we keep on talking about port. Ease of doing business and opening up the non-oil sector. It's all about port. Goods have to come in, goods have to move out. We have a lot of challenges about that. If, 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 High cost, logistics issue, traffic issue, even uh, our export commodities getting uh, damaged. 
along the way and within the port. The that, port that's, that's where I was going to take you up on because if we are to, um, just as you said, improve the pro productive sector, then mm -hmm. we need to export more than we import. That's correct. Um, how, how quickly do you see that happening? Uh, what does this government need to do to fast track that process? It's easy. When the president was coming for campaign about uh, two, three weeks ago in Lagos, of course, the port road was clear and people were able to drive from the uh, island to Apapa within a uh, uh, 10 15 minutes. That's why I said that with a, a cleaning up the port, you don't need any new law to clean up the port. It is consistency and presidential will mm. to get it done. They know exactly what to do. And if we are going to move away from depending on uh, crude oil sales to fund a, 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 a foreign exchange, we need to export, we need to produce more, whether they are raw, semi manufactured, or manufactured. But the port needs to work. And that, that, that we need to produce more points to the SME, small and medium enterprises, right? And then from your sectoral performance scorecards, we really don't seem to be doing so well. That, that's correct. What affects the large companies are affecting the small companies. You know, a lot of companies we've seen over the last few years move from even formal to informal, from, 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 uh, from micro to mini micro. You know, everybody just try to cut yourself to size, and that because of inflation, because of exchange rate issue, but more importantly because of regulatory uh, overhang that uh, businesses continue to see uh, across the country. So, but, what, what about manufacturing? Since you talk about um, the capacity to, uh, in your slide, you also talk about manufacturing capacity. If we don't have that electricity running, do you see that happening? in this next four years such that we are able to say that we have at least one uh, sector working again. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria have been very concerned about how uh, companies are becoming, factories are becoming moribund. Can we revive them in the next four years? We all know, including government, know that without power, the manufacturing sector, we don't have anywhere to go. Currently, the few manufacturing plants that are operating are operating, spending about 19% of their operating costs on provision of alternative power supply and also paying this school for power they never supply to their factory. These are challenges. 19%. Apart from you are spending money, you are also spending the management time. Some of them even have a different department that, that handles a, a, a power. So two things that must be done for us to uh, get our manufacturing sector working. Two major important things. We have to fix power and get power across to the factories. Secondly, logistics. Moving raw materials from farm gate or from the port to the factory and moving finished goods from the factory to the markets across the country. We need to fix that. And real is the answer. Okay. We'll take a short break and uh, we'll be back with more in just a moment. Join us again. Welcome back. Dr. Wani, over the next four years, do you see the price of food items and the price of petrol going up? Yes. You know, um, right now the issue is about insecurity. You know, uh, last year about 10% of farmers, would be farmers, did not farm because of fear of being hacked by headsmen or other uh, kidnappers across the country. You know, so that again reduces how much we're able to supply to the market. And at the same time, our population, people that will eat that food are growing about 3% every, every year population. So food price will naturally grow, uh, go up if we continue to do what we are doing. And again, ability to preserve our food because of uh, the power we just spoke about, electricity, is no, is, we are not optimizing that. Ability to move our raw food from the farm gate to the market is also uh, uh, distorted because, logistic, because of logistics challenge, bad road, no real, and even about 1,400 checkpoints uh, for, for between Kano and, and Lagos that uh, uh, truck drivers have to contend with, and, and all the delays are uh, involved. So these are the lo these are the uh, these are the constraints that really need to be to be removed or eliminated if we want to get food from farm gate to the market and from market to the port and table. Uh, you know, and having said that, I also believe that the current administration, having spent four years, will likely need to review certain things. Is it about welfareist uh, mentality or posture 
or to really doing things that will not just last this generation but uh, uh, generations to come. What about yes, the central uh, uh, decision? What are we going to do about subsidy? You know, what do we, we, if we want to get our oil, oil and gas uh, going, we need to rethink our subsidy issue. We need to re, we need to re, rethink about school feeding. We need to rethink about the about the trade money and all these things. Is that about where fair is no? How much road, new road, can are we going to pay with this money? How much new rail track and the wagon are, are we going to put in place? And how much new um, power distribution network are we going to build with, with such money that will not just benefit this generation but future generation? It is a critical decision, and we really need to take that decision because it is between the devil. Okay. This, this, this is a very, very short one. You have to give me a very short answer to this okay. one. But uh, no, the president has said that in his next cabinet, um, integrity is going to play a very huge role. What's the value of the moral quotient to our economic development? Fine. Uh, it's, it's very imperative. The moral quotient, uh, quotient is very, very imper imperative. But I believe that this time we will need to make sure that we don't trade integrity and corruption posture with poverty. As we are moving up in the corruption index from 48 to maybe close to 100, we also need to bring down the number of poor Nigerians from 96 million to maybe 50 million in the next four years. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Vincent Wani, for talking to us, an investment and uh, business consultant. And that's been the show today. I want to thank you so much indeed for watching. I am Gimba Uman. And I am Ayo Makinde. Thank you. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Yes, on this program are those of the maker and do not reflect the views, opinions, and endorsements.